So I'm sitting in my new to me crashed 2013 BMW 550i. You can see it's crashed, I have to still fix that. But in this video, I want to go over the costs. What did I pay to get this car to where it is right now from where it was before? So for the nosy people, I actually find it interesting. Um, to a certain extent, the information is already out there. The fees are, have to be published on the pages that are important. So you can go into the math, but I want to give you the example for this specific car. So I bought a car from Copart, as I mentioned before. Copart lists all their fees on the homepage, they have to. But still, it is all dependent on the actual final bid price. So you don't really know exactly how much you're paying until the bidding is over and the final price is established. Then you can go and check what are the fees and so on. I'm based in California. For whatever reason, I'm not allowed to bid on cars in my home state here in California. I don't know if that is a Copart thing or if this is a California thing. I assume it's a California thing to protect the public, I guess, from buying things with their own money. Anyway, that just means as a result, I have to go for a broker that then buys the car. So why don't I buy a car from out of state? It saves me some money. Yes, the broker is gonna be cheaper. Maybe I don't even need a broker. I would still recommend to use a broker for paperwork and everything. However, if it's further away, you have transport and it adds up quickly. But if you're honest, between California and the eastern half or the eastern third of the country, there's not too much going on. So you will have to probably buy it on the east coast and then transport it all the way here. And it's just, it's easily eating all the, the, the money that you save from not using the broker and buying out of state. So in my opinion, it's not worth it. Maybe you also save taxes, which is fine. Let's just assume best case you break even. Right? It doesn't cost you more or less if you buy it from over there and have it shipped over here. Comes out to the same. Then there's still one big risk factor that I'm not willing to take, which is you haven't seen the car. You've just seen some photos. And when you take a look in person, you will see damages that is not on the photo. Because oftentimes, as I mentioned in other videos, they cut off the, the frame for the photo right here. So you see the door panel, which is fine, but you often don't see if the airbag is exploded or not. Unless they use the 360 um, view, then you can go and look around. It's really helpful. So when I buy a car that has an accident on there, I at least want to see it in person. I also want to at least have a look at the underbody just a little bit, whatever you can see, to determine if there's more damage hidden or not. Because none of those pages actually take photos of the underbody. So, but that's where it can get really expensive really quickly. I bought this car um, at a corporate auction and I paid $4,000 for it. Um, the initial auction was way less, but then the seller, which was, I think it was Farmers Insurance, they decided, nope, it's too little, we want more, and they put it up again. At that point, I've already looked at it, and it was fine. What they asked for was within what I had planned anyway, so I just went ahead and buy it straight away. So remember that, $4,000 is the, the final price on the Copart page. That is before any fees are added. Usually if you go and bid on eBay or whatnot, you have your listing price or your bid price, and then you have maybe shipping and uh, tax on top. That is it. But with Copart, it's a little bit complex. There are more, a lot more fees coming. So this is the car. That's what it was, how it was listed. Bid prices here, win number, if you want to check, I don't care, there's no personal information on here. Another interesting thing though, Copart listed it as a value of 16 and a half. That is what they say is the estimated retail value, of course, before the accident. Once the accident happens, it changes everything. But after looking into it, I believe the car has some neglected services on the engine that has to be done that is not factored in. Many things are just not factored in. They just pulled the value out of Kelly Blue Book or something or the insurance database and call it a day. I believe they use this value here. Um, the insurance used that value to determine the, the write-off and that just gets carried through. Copart says the car is worth 6.5K. Um, <clears throat> by the time I'm finished with getting it back into proper condition and catching up on the service and all the problems in the engine, I might end up near to that. However, that value here is of course is a clean title vehicle. It's gonna be salvaged now or rebuilt car then. So that, of course, um, depresses the value. So anyway, back to the numbers. <clears throat> I have some more papers here. 4,000 
is where it all started. For your shipper to pick it up from Copart, because you cannot go by yourself unless you are a registered um, shipper and you are allowed to go onto the Copart lot and pick up the cars, which I guess I'm not. You have to hire someone, right? And that person will then get to, in my case, first time I'm doing this, the shipper then handed me the actual Copart bill. That was the first time I saw it after I got my bill from the broker and from the shipper, and then I got the Copart bill. But it is important to get a first estimate because my broker told me that the price of the vehicle is $4,983. And then they added their own fees. Those $983 gotta be coming from Copart. So let's just take a look at where that comes from. I'm gonna put a screenshot here so you can also see and follow along. But in short, if a uh, sale price is 4K, if an environmental fee, 10 bucks, a buyer fee, a buyer fee of 725 bucks. We have an internet bid fee, even though I didn't even bid on the internet. It's $99. I already hit Copart for that fee alone. It's like probably also a service fee somewhere. We have a gate fee, which is $79. That is just to take the car out of the lot. That you just bought <laughs> to take your property out of the lot, you gotta pay $79. You gotta pay $20 Copart mailing fee. There was a storage fee charged for $5, which I don't understand why because um, the car was picked up the next day after auction ended or after I bought it. So I think it says they don't charge any storage until third or fourth day. So that is odd, but it's not big enough to make a fuss about it. And that should take me to the Total price of $4,983 paid to Copart. And then, as I mentioned, I had to use a broker to be able to buy the car in the first place. That broker charged me a California special fee. Um, they do that if you buy a car in California and you reside in California and you plan to keep the car in California, you pay a higher fee. But that fee is $675. There's another $45 documentation fee, another $20 of document mailing fee, a $15 wire fee. Um, then I pay tax, which is $462.66. And those are all the fees from the broker. So at this point, I paid $6,266. And then I paid another $300 for shipping. So in total, to get a $4,000 car out of the Copart lot, into my driveway, I paid $6,500.66. So $4,000 price, delivered, processed, everything. That is another $2,500. Like what, 55, 60% of the purchase price in fees on top. It's insane. It is ridiculous to be honest. Oh, and I forgot, that was another $35 um, wire fee for my bank. So I paid a wire fee on my bank and I paid a wire fee for the recipient. And that brings the total to $6,535.66. Instead of having a $4,000 car, this is in fact a $6,500 car now. And now you take into consideration all the damage repair. I'm going to start on the interior here. This buffers me just getting in and out. I'm going to check the other airbag, take that out and start getting prepared. I keep you updated. I will have a follow-up video talking about the financials, about the repair portion of it. Now you know what I paid to get the car here and where the fees come from. So in case you were considering buying a car from Copart, keep that in mind. I was of course informed myself before also, and I expected somewhere between like $1,200 to $1,500 in fees from yeah, for a price about that, but it ended up to be $2,500 delivered so and for the delivery basically i had to do all the work if you are not um, familiar with getting cars to move again you might want to get someone who is because the delivery service i used that did we just drove the car here but i had to put the car into neutral i had to get power to the car to take the parking brake off so they did help. They luckily had jumper cables because my box somehow didn't work. But yeah, I had to also get access to the trunk. I had to call in here. Keep that in mind that it will have to be done because usually at least BMWs, probably Mercedes are the same. 
the car will snap into in the park and the parking brake may fall or someone may just put it where it has power and then you're stuck with that problem. That is just a side note. That's been the cost to get the car here. Now you know that. Somewhat happy that nobody was smoking in the car. Again, that goes into selecting the right car for you and being able to go in person to take a look at it. it Costs me more, but I can avoid certain things. Somewhat confident that the car has not been abused, at least not by the previous owner, because you have two child seats in there. You're not racing that car with kiddos in there, right? And by all the evidence I found, it's been a, a young family. So confident on that side. However, also confident that the service wasn't done properly because the car is just so oily. It's leaking everywhere. There are some cheap fixes done to it that I can't really approve of. And I found other damages. I'm going to go over all the damages in the next video on this car. And also over the little mysteries I found that I have no explanation for so far. Stay tuned. That'll be fun and interesting. As of now, I'm going to continue fixing this thing and keep you posted. And I try to make more content for you that is somewhat useful. So thanks for watching it. You can let me know what you think of this fee schedule that hit me. <laughs> and I'm going to see you in the next video.